Hello everyone, I am Giri, faculty of Ohm Institute for Power System subject. In this video, we will discuss solutions for power system and three phase circuit questions which were asked in uh, recently conducted TG Genco uh, 2024 AE exam. Okay, so from three phase circuits, two questions are given. From total power system, uh, 14 questions were given, including generation and economic load dispatch. Okay, so first we will install uh, three phase circuit questions. I already told you there are two questions given from three phase circuits. Let's see the first question. Uh, which of the following statements are wrong with respect to three phase system? Okay, so if you uh, even I gone through the complete paper. So there are uh, many questions are given from what? Uh, pick up in correct statement and incorrect statement. Okay. So most of the people, if they are not uh, concentrated while reading the question, they may end up with what wrong answers. Okay. These type of questions, you should be answered very carefully. Okay. But in this question, what is asking? Pick up the wrong statement, not the correct statement. Right. So pick up wrong statement. Okay. Now, if you really notice this question, so statement, four statements are given in a balanced delta system, line currents are 30 degree behind the respective phase currents. What is saying? Line current lags the phase current by 30 degrees. Other words, we can say line current lags the phase current by 30 degrees. Yes, it is a correct statement. This statement is what? Correct statement. Okay. Right. In a balanced star system, line currents are 30 degree behind the respective phase currents. No. Actually, for a delta connection, you know, line current equal to what? Root 3 times phase current. Line current equal to root 3 times phase current at an angle minus 30. But line voltage equal to what? Phase voltage. It is a basic thing. Every electrical engineer will know about this. Based on this only question was framed. And star connection, you know, star connection. What about the line voltage? Line voltage equal to root 3 times phase voltage at an angle plus 30 degrees. That means line voltage leads the phase voltage by 30 degrees. Okay. And line current equal to what? Phase current. Now if you know this relation and if you read the question carefully, we can easily answer this. Now let's see the second statement what is mentioned line currents are 30 degree behind the respective phase currents. No, line current and phase currents are what? Same. That means line current equal to phase currents and line current and phase currents are in phase. So that's why. So this is not a, uh, this is a wrong statement. In a balanced star system, line voltages are 30 degree ahead of respect to phase voltage. What is the meaning of this statement? Line voltage leads. Ahead means what? Leading. Line voltage leads the phase voltage by how much? 30 degrees. Yes, it is a correct statement. And in a balanced delta system, the line voltages are 30 degree behind the respect to phase voltages. Again, it is a wrong. Why? Because in case of delta connection, you know, line voltage and phase voltage are same. Line voltage in phase with what? Phase voltage. That's why I can say this is the incorrect statement. That means statement 1 and 3 are correct statements. Statement 2 and 4 are what? Incorrect statements. But what is asking? Pick up the what? Wrong statements. That means wrong statements are what? 3 and, sorry, 2 and 4. So that, that's why the answer for this question is what? 2 and 4. Again, it is a very basic question. It's a fundamental question. Clear? Now, we'll move on to the next question. Again, this question is also from three-phase system applications. Okay. It's a uh, somewhat analysis-based question. Okay. First, I will tell you how to answer very simply. Okay. Later, we'll see. Okay. So, mathematical calculations behind it. Let's see. In a three-phase 400 volts, four-wire system, one incandescent lamp of rating 230 volts, 100 watts, is connected between R phase and neutral. Let's see. I will write R phase, Y phase, D phase and neutral. Okay. R, Y, B and what? Neutral. One lamp is connected between what? Let's say this is the lamp. For example, this lamp is connected between what? R phase and neutral. Fine. And another lamp is connected between what? Y phase and neutral. What is this? 230 volts, 100 watts. This is 230 volts, 100 watts. And another lamp is what? Connected between uh, Y phase. 
ओके वाई फेज एंड न्यूट्रल दैट इज टू थर्टी या टू थर्टी वोल्स एंड टू हंड्रेड वैट्स नाउ टेल मी इफ द न्यूट्रल वायर इज ब्रोकन नाउ वॉट इज द मीनिंग ऑफ न्यूट्रल वायर इज ब्रोकन ओके इफ द न्यूट्रल इज ब्रोकन जस्ट सी हियर आई एम जस्ट रिमूविंग द न्यूट्रल वायर वॉट एपन्स If I remove the neutral wire, let's see. Okay, that means what you can understand here: these two lamps are connected in series between what R and Y. Between R and Y, what is the voltage? Line voltage. Between R and Y, the line voltage. You can think like this: there is a 400 volts. Between R and Y, the line voltage is what? 400 volts. 400 volts across what? Across two resistances, because I am just representing the lamp as a resistance. Lamp one is R one, lamp two is what R two. Okay, what is R one? So we know that uh, power equal to what V square by R one. What is R one now? V square. That is what two thirty square by hundred. What about R two? Similar lines. 230 square by 200. So I can assume R1 equal to R, R2 equal to what? R by 2. So R1 equal to what? R. This is 230 square by 100. What about R2? 230 square by 200. This is the best way to answer. If this is R, what about this? R by 2. Now just think about how the voltage will be sharing across these two resistances. See. Total 400 volts. I have R and 0.5 amp. Okay. So what is the voltage sharing formula? Suppose if I want to calculate this as V1 and this as V2, across which we have a more voltage that we need to calculate. And if the voltage is going about 230 volts, then only lamp will fail. Otherwise, the lamp will not fail. Lamp will glow. Okay. Lamp will glow. And which will glow? higher means the one which is having high resistance will glow higher the one which is having low resistance which go which will glow what lower by saying this r1 is r r2 is r r by 2 r1 will glow higher but that may not be the correct answer why because if the voltage across r1 or r2 crossing 230 volts definitely one lamp will fail one lamp will fail means what another lamp also will fail but first who will fail the one which is having what high voltage now let's see what is v1 now v1 means what i can directly write the formula voltage division rule 400 into r1 r1 is nothing but what r divide with what r plus r by 2 r plus r by 2 okay so now tell me what is this if i solve this so 2 by 3 right yeah 2 by 3 times uh 2 by 3 times 400 So two by three times four hundred. Yeah, <clears throat> that means eight hundred by three. Just check eight hundred by three means what? Uh, which will be what? Definitely greater than what? Two thirty volts. Eight hundred by three is definitely greater than what? Two thirty volts. Okay, clear. So that means if V one is greater than what? Two thirty volts. Hundred percentage V one will sorry lamp one will what? fail once the lamp one is failed then what lamp two also will fail okay 100 percentage both lamps will damage okay but first who will fail lamp one will fail later what lamp two will fail now let's read the options 200 watt lamp will fuse first no who will fuse first 100 watt 100 uh, watt lamp will fuse first both lamps will glow both lamps will fuse at the same time no actually first Lamp one will fuse first. Later, what lamp two? So that's why this is not the correct statement. The correct statement is what hundred watt lamp will fuse first. Fuse first means what? It will uh, it fuse will break down. That means the lamp will what fail. Okay. So that's why the best option is what A. So what we have done here? See, it's clearly mentioned. So lamp one is connected between R and neutral. Lamp two is connected between what Y and neutral. If the neutral is fail, these two lamps are coming in series. Across the line voltage, line voltage is not two thirty. Line voltage is four hundred volts. 
Now we apply the voltage division rule and we calculate the volt, what is the voltage across the lamp 1 which is more than 230 volts. If this is more than 230 which is less than what 230 because this is 230 and this is this should be what 270 but this is more than 230 right okay clear. So that's why no doubt the 100 watt lamp will fuse first okay clear. So I hope you understand this next question we'll see. See this question, if six, six identical machines are connected to the same bus bar, each having inertia constant of 5 megajoules for MVA and rated for 60 MVA. That means how many machines are connected in parallel here? Six machines, machine 1, machine 2, machine 3, machine 4, machine 5 and machine 6. Now all machines are having same rating and same inertia constant. Inertia constant of all the machines is what? 5 mega joules for MVA. And all the machines having rating, G is the symbol for rating, let's say 60 MVA. Okay, fine. Now tell me what is asking. So what is the equivalent inertia constant? What is the equivalent inertia constant on what? 360 MVA base. Okay, by considering 360 MVA base. So what is the formula here? H equivalent equal to what? G1 H1 plus what? G2 H2 up to some what? G6 H6 by what? G system or G base. System base MVA or equivalent base MVA. But equivalent base MVA how much given here? What is given? 360 right? Okay now let's see. What is G? All are identical machines. G and H are same. So 6 into what? G into H by what? 360. But this G is what? Again 60. Okay. So 6 into 60, 360, 360 by 360, 1. So that means this is equivalent to what? H only. What is this H? Phi only. So that's why H equivalent equal to what? H only. Okay. So the answer is what? 5 megajoules for NVA. Okay. Since there are 6 machines which are running in parallel and he's asking on what? 360 MVA base. Okay. Clear. 660 is what? 360. Divide with 360. Get cancelled. So H equivalent and H are what? Remain equal. Okay. Right. Now we'll move on to the next question. Now, if you notice this question, this question is from uh, Newton Rapson method, especially mentioned polar coordinates. And asking about Jacobian matrix elements indicates what? Okay, so if you see the Jacobian matrix, it's a basic fundamental question actually. Jacobian matrix means what? We have a sub matrix dou P by dou delta, dou P by dou magnitude V, dou Q by dou delta, dou Q by dou V. See, tell me what this Jacobian entries indicates. How the real power is changing with what? Delta. What is the meaning of this? How real power is sensitive to what? Delta. If delta varies, how the real power is varying? If voltage magnitude is varying, how real power is varying? If delta is varying, how reactive power is varying? If voltage magnitude is varying, how reactive power is varying? What is this? This will give sensitive information. That means how real power is sensitive to V and delta. How reactive power is sensitive to what? V and delta. That information the Jacobian matrix is really has. Okay. So that's why it will give what? Sensitive information but not real power flow, reactive power flow, losses or okay anything else. It's only what? Sensitivity information. It's simple mass question. Okay. So if you know what is Jacobian entry then later on it's just a mass. It's a differentiation. Differentiation means what? It's just a sensitivity. You are finding what? Sensitivity of one parameter with respect to another parameter by using differentiation. It's just a basic definition of differentiation, right? Okay. So that's why the answer for this question is, you know, sensitivity information. Okay. Now we'll move on to the next question. Yeah, this question is what? Bit tricky. Okay. So till now, this kind of question is not asked in uh, uh, any competitive exam, not even in gate also. It's a bit lengthy question, no doubt, because he has mentioned the tap changing transformer here. With tap changing transformer, analysis become bit complex. 
but anyway i uh, explained clearly how to calculate the y bus if there is a phase shifting transformer if there is a tap changing transformers okay and so the the link for that video is available in the description you can just check that it's just 24 minutes video you can watch that you can get a what complete idea about how to calculate y bus whenever there is a phase shifting transformers and whenever there is a uh, tap changing transformers in power system okay right now so how to uh, analyze this question one can answer by eliminating the options also okay by eliminating the options also we can answer okay let's see y33 is always minus j20 y33 is always minus j20 because there is no phase shifting transformer in this line or in this line so that's why y33 is what some of these two minus j20 here minus j20 is there so this option might be correct this option might be correct but these two options i can eliminate okay forget about this for, for example i am not in a position to understand this branch then what let's concentrate on these two branches at least you can try to answer next y13 is what plus j10 and y31 also what plus j10 so that means these two options are again saying that so that means so we need to know something about this two branches or something about the uh, these two nodes and how this branch is connected then only we can answer so this can model with like this this can model with something like this so where a is what here a equal to 1.1 okay i explained clearly in that video okay how to convert a series branch into nominal pi model if there exist a tap changing transformer okay it's just a series branch right so there is a transformer one is to a and here the series admittance is what yk so this we can model like this okay clear now let's see how to modify this this will not change this is minus j10 this is also minus j10 at bus 3 bus 3 to 2 this is a bus 3 this is bus 1 and this is bus 2 between 1 and 3 minus j10 between 2 and 3 minus j10 is connected but between 1 and 2 how to model this we can model like this with three branches what is that nominal pi that means whenever there is a tap changing transformers are present in the circuit see this is what the nominal pi equivalent of tap changing transformer in series with an admittance okay clear now tell me what is the value of a here 1.1 so a into yk that means 1.1 into minus j10 so minus j11 here minus j11 okay clear uh, then again here what a yk into a minus 1 a is 1.1 1.1 a minus 1 is what 1 so simply again it is a yk right or not a is 1.1 right this is what 1.1 minus 1 again 1 uh, sorry 1.1 uh, minus 1 i'm sorry 1.1 minus 1 is what 0.1 0.1 into a 0.11 into yk better to write like that because a is 1.1 again if you want i will substitute here 1.1 into yk into 1.1 minus 1 is what 0.1 so this is what 0.11 into yk this branch now what about this branch 1 minus uh, 1.1 means what minus 0.1 into yk so let's write that 0.11 into yk is what uh, 0.11 into 10 1.1 Minus J, one point one. Minus J, one point one. This admittance, this is admittance form. I think you noticed with that. Then what about this? Minus J, one. Minus J one. Now let's see how to calculate the Y bus. You know the diagonal entries and off diagonal entries. Diagonal entries means what? At bus one. you need to add all the admittances connected y11 is nothing but what is the total admittance which is connected at bus 1 total admittance which is connected at bus 1 is what minus j10 minus j11 and minus j1.1 this is what minus j21.1 minus j21.1 
I'm sorry, minus j 22.1. Okay. Have a look. Uh, yeah. This is 10, 11 is 21. 21 plus 1.1. So it is what? 22.1. Minus j 22.1. Okay. And what about off diagonal element? What is connected between 1 and 2? 1 and 2, what is the series admittance? Minus j 11. It will be what? Minus of that. Okay. So, what is y12? y12 equal to what? Minus of series admittance is connected between 1 and 2. Minus of series admittance is this now. So, that is why what? j11 we get. Then, what about y12? Sorry, y13. y13 means what? Minus of series admittance connected between 1 and 3. So, that means what? j10. And y12, y21 are same. Directly I am writing j11. Okay. But what about y22? y22 means what? The total shunt admittance and series admittance connected to bus 2. Total shunt and series and the total admittance connected to bus 2. What is the total admittance connected to bus 2? Tell me. So, I made a mistake here. Uh, this is minus, no? Minus into minus will be what? Plus. Okay. Ah, now, it is correct. 11 minus 11 plus 1 is minus 10. Minus 10 plus minus 10 minus 20. So, that means minus j20 only. Clear? Then, what is y23 is plus j10. Similarly, y13 is like a y, y31 is equal to what? y13. Then, next one, j10. Then, y33 is what? Minus j20. So, this is what the y was calculation. So, what we done is, whenever there is a tap changing transformer is connected along with what? A series admittance. Then, we can convert this into what? Something like this. That series admittance, we can convert into what? A series admittance and what? To shunt admittances as a nominal pi model. Okay? Clear? So, this is the fundamental uh, formula to convert from series branch to what? Nominal pi model. Okay? Again, I am saying, I explained clearly in a YouTube lecture. The link will be given in description also. You can please watch that. You will get a clarity on how to deal with tap changing transformers and phase shifting transformers also. Okay. When Y bus is asked with tap changing transformers and phase shifting transformers. Okay. Clear. So, it is a bit lengthy question, no doubt. Okay. This kind of questions better you need to skip in the exam because it required what? So much of analysis. It will kill your time. Okay. Now, we will go to the next question. Let us see. The lossless transmission line has a surge impedance loading of 2000 megawatt. Surge impedance loading is given, right? How much? 2000 megawatt. Now, what is asking? A series capacitive compensation of 25 percentage is given. Then, the new surge impedance loading of the compensated line will be around. So, that means after providing the compensation, we need to calculate the surge impedance loading. So, what is the formula which relates this? The new surge impedance loading or SIL dash is equal to what? SIL under root of 1 minus KSEC. KSEC means degree of series capacitive compensation. Degree of series capacitive compensation is clearly mentioned in the problem. What is that? 25 percentage means what? 0.25. If I substitute what I get? 2000 megawatt divide with root over 1 minus uh, 0.25 I can write 1 by 4 better okay so that we can easily solve right now 2000 divide with by default we get it in megawatt no doubt 1 minus 1 by 4 is what root 3 by 4 root 3 by 4 now we can handle this root 3 by 4 very easily okay how 2000 by what? Root 3. Root 4 become what? 2. That will be coming in the numerator. Okay? 2 times. That means 4000 by root 3. The answer is what? 4000 by root 3. You know root 3 value approximately 0.577. Okay? 1 by root 3 value. So, 4000 into 0.577 approximately I am saying. 
Now tell me, what is this value? 4000 into what? 0. 0.577. So 4000 into 0. 0.5 is what? 2000. And plus what? 0. 0.77 multiplied in 0. 0.077, which is approximately what? Uh, 28, uh, uh, sorry. Uh, 28 plus 28. So around what? Uh, so 2300 and what? 10 megawatts. You just try it, uh, you will get approximately this answer. Nearest answer is this which is not 2560, no doubt, which is very high, okay. In that case, the answer, the point, the multiplication factor should be what, greater than 0 0.6, then only which will be what, 0 0.56, uh, uh, 2560. But now here the multiplication factor is what, 0 0.577, that's why it will be less than that, and greater than 2000. So obviously this is the best answer, okay. Clear, that's how we can answer in the exam, because calculators are not there, okay. Now we'll move on to the next question. Now let's see, a transmission line with a per unit line reactance of J.1 is connected between the ith bus and jth bus. Uh, the power system with bus voltage as shown below. That means the bus one, bus I voltage is VA delta I, bus J voltage is VJ delta J. Now identify the incorrect statement. See this. It's not correct statement, incorrect statement. First we'll try to answer what are correct statements. See, uh, generally, uh, this question is uh, regarding real and uh, reactive power flow, okay. So we know that always reactive power is flowing from high magnitude voltage bus to low magnitude voltage bus. And uh, real power is flowing from what? Higher load angle bus to lower load angle bus. Okay. And uh, real power is flowing from higher load angle bus to what? Lower load angle bus. Reactive power is always flowing from high magnitude voltage bus to and low magnitude voltage bus. Okay, but if both bus voltages are same, then the reactive power is always flowing from what? Bus 1 to line and what? Bus 2 to line. These things I already discussed in the classroom. So maybe my students might be answered this question. Okay, so if both bus voltages are same, generally people may think that reactive power is zero. No. Reactive power is flowing from what? Bus 1 to line and bus 2 to line. In that case what? Line will consume the reactive power. Okay, right. Anyway, so let's try to read the statements here. If VI greater than VJ, then reactive power flow from node I to node J. Yes, this statement is 100% correct. VI greater than VJ, the reactive power flowing from where? Node I to node J. Reactive power is flowing from high magnitude voltage bus to low magnitude voltage bus. That statement is correct. If VI equal to VJ, the net reactive power consumed by the line is drawn equally from both the sides of the nodes and is greater than zero. Yes, this is correct. So, if both bus voltages are same, this is what Q, this is what Q. Even I derived this, I explained this clearly, I explained this special case uh, clearly in the classroom. Okay? Clear? Ah, anyway. So, if both bus voltages are same, the reactive power coming from here, coming from here is what same. That means, the reactive power injected from bus I and injected from bus J and this total reactive power consumed by the line. That means, what is the reactive power consumed by the line? That is 2Q. Okay, this statement is correct, no doubt. And what about here, last statement, if VI equal to VJ, the net reactive power consumed by the line is equal to zero. No, this is a wrong statement. And he's asking to pick up the wrong statement or incorrect statement. That is what, only three. Okay, only three is the incorrect statement. Okay, clear. You know, the formula for this also, Q equal to, otherwise, Q1. Let's say this is Q1 or qi, now this is what qj in this direction. Now, what is the formula for qi? vi, vj, okay, just hold on. Mm. Yeah. Okay. vi square by x minus vi vj by x into cos of delta i minus delta j. Okay. Clear. Now tell me if I take uh, vi square common, what I get? vi common, vi by x common better. vi minus vj times cos of delta i minus delta j. So if vi equal to vj, that is equal to v, then what? We can write v square by x 1 minus cos of delta i minus delta j. 
This is for QI. Now QJ will get like this. VI VJ by X into cos of delta I minus delta J minus Vj square, Vj square by x. Now, if Vi, Vi equal to Vj, na, then we can write V square by x common. Then what? Cos of delta i minus what? Delta j minus what? 1. This is the formula, derivation. Suppose if this is what? Plus q. Again what? See here, V square by x. In the bracket here what? 1 minus cos function. Here cos minus 1 function. This will be what? Minus q. And both are what? Same. But what? The direction will be reverse. Qj you calculated here. And what is that? Minus q. Minus q means what? Plus q in this direction. That's what I written. Okay? Clear? And it's an important conclusion. Everybody should notice. Okay? If both bus voltage magnitudes are same, then reactive power is coming from what? Bus I2 line, bus J2 line. And magnitude of the reactive powers are what? Same. And the total reactive power consumed is what? 2 times of Q. Okay. Now, we'll move on to the next question. Again, this is a very simple question. Ask it from symmetrical components. So, the positive, negative and zero sequence impedance relation for synchronous machine and overhead transmission line respectively. See, generally synchronous machine means for salient pole machine and cylindrical rotor machine, these relations are what? Slightly different. For salient pole machine, Generally, we can write what Z1 greater than Z2, which is greater than what Z0. But for cylindrical rotor machine, cylindrical rotor machine, salient pole machine, okay. Yeah. For cylindrical rotor synchronous machine, what about these relations? Z1 equal to what Z2, and that is what greater than Z0. And transmission line always Z1 equal to Z2, but which is what? Very, very small when compared to what? Z0. Z0 is what? Very high. Okay. Very high. Now let's see which relation is correct here. So first, if you think about synchronous machine, two options are correct. Why? Z1 greater than Z2 greater than Z0. This is also correct. Z1 equal to Z2 equal to Z2 greater than what? Z0. This is also correct. But these two you can eliminate. Why? Because Z1 greater than Z2 and Z2 equal to Z0, this is never be correct. And Z1 equal to Z2, this is also uh, somewhat correct, but uh, which is what? Less than Z0, this is not at all correct. That's why, so these two options are correct as per the uh, options given. Because he has not mentioned what type of synchronous machine it is. It's just a what? Synchronous machine, not mentioned salient pole or cylindrical loader. But if you see the other option, the Z1 and Z2 are same, that is very less than Z0. Yes or not? But that is where, not here, not here, not here, only here. That's why the best option is what? 3. Without you need to answer. Because not mentioned whether it is salient pole machine or what? Cylindrical rotor machine. So indirectly in this question, he has considered what? It is a, you know, so cylindrical rotor machine. I hope you understand this. Right? We'll move on to the next question. Yeah, again, it's a very simple question from economic load dispatch. You can get the answer very easily here. See, incremental fuel costs are given. And also what? The total demand is given. Okay. And maximum and minimum loading limits also given. 625 and what? 100 megawatts. The economic loading of generators for a demand of 800 megawatt is. So, we know this. P1 plus P2 equal to what? Total demand, 800. And IC1 equal to what? IC2. You have to solve these two equations. It's not a... Uh, I can say easy question because calculators are not available. Okay. So you have to solve somehow. That's it. Uh, 0 0.008. So 0 0.008 means what? Yeah. Let me write 0 0.008 P1 minus 0 0.0096 P2. That is equal to what now? 6.4 minus 8. 6.4 minus 8 means uh, 1.6 minus 1.6. Now this is equation 1 and equation 2. Now you need to solve these two equations. Okay. So to do so you just multiply with what? Uh, um, 1000 here. Okay. Otherwise uh, you just multiply with what? 1250. So that this will become what? P1. And you need to get some value here and some value there. Somehow you need to add it and you have to calculate what P1 and P2. Okay. Clear?
again in a short span of one minute solving this question is what okay not an easy task okay but somehow we can use a uh, simple numerical techniques and you can solve this and finally the answer for this question is you know 345 and 455 i solve this question approximately we are getting 345 and 455 for p1 and p2 so the co concept is simple the total demand equal to what p1 plus p2 and ic1 equal to ic2 right incremental fuel cost must be same now we'll move on to the next question again uh, in this question a single line diagram is given with all uh, per unit zero sequence reactants of all the elements are given all the elements per unit zero sequence reactants are given on a common base also mentioned the thevenin's equivalent of zero sequence reactants network seen between the points p to reference is from point p to reference is asking okay you know the, what is the thevenin's equivalent of what the generator okay the generator thevenin's equivalent is what sorry generator zero sequence equivalence is what there is a zero sequence reactants x not plus what Three times the neutral reactants with respect to reference. This is okay. Again, between uh, after this we have a transformer that is delta and star grounded. Delta means what? Primary open and it's connected to the neutral or reference point. This is the thevenin. Sorry, this is the zero sequence equivalence of what transformer? Where x naught is what j point one here. Okay, let me write directly j point one. Now after this, what transmission line directly connected, J point four. Then after that, what from point P, this is what point P. Again, a transformer. Primary side is what star grounded. Secondary side is what delta. Okay. Now after that, we have a star connected motor or generator, whatever it might be. Star connected neutral is ungrounded. That's why this is open. So you should know. What is the zero sequence equivalent circuit of every element? If it is star connected, star grounded, star ungrounded. Star ungrounded means what? The neutral side open. Okay. Clear. This is the zero sequence model. Now he is asking between P and what? Neutral means or P and reference. J point four, J point one are in series. That will be J point five. And this side is what? J point one again. So the answer is what? J thevenin is equal to what? J point five parallel with what? J point one. So what is that? J point one into what? J point one by what? J point six. So that means what? J point five by six. Clear? J point five by six. Okay. So J point five six means zero point zero eight three plus J only. And you can eliminate the options also. You know, minus options are what you can eliminate directly. These two options you can eliminate, and the answer will be definitely less than what point one. Why? Because two impedances are connected in parallel means the resultant will be what less than the minimum, less than point one. Less than point one means what? Only this. Sorry, uh, this one, not this one. So that's why the best option is what J zero point zero eight three three. So if you solve this, we get J zero point zero eight three three. Okay, clear. Understand. Now we'll move on to the next question. The reverse power protection is applied for. Generally, we use a reverse power protection or directional relay to protect the generator against loss of prime mover, or loss of turbine, loss of mechanical input, or turbine failure. All are what same statements. If the turbine is failed, the machine is continuously rotating at synchronous speed in the same direction, but it has a motor. So in that case, the active power will flow in this direction. This is whenever there is a loss of turbine. But original case, the active power is flowing in this direction. So original power is this. This is in case of what prime mover failure or what turbine failure. So this is what a relay. What type of relay it is? It's a reverse power flow relay or directional relay. A reverse power relay or directional relay is used to protect the generator against what? Turbine failure, prime mover failure, loss of mechanical input, loss of prime mover, loss of turbine. All statements are what same, as same meaning. Okay, so that's why the best option is what turbine failure, not for overspeed, not for excitation failure, not for state or earth fault. Okay, clear. It's only for turbine failure. So we'll move on to the next question. Again, this is a, a question given from uh, economic power generation. What is mentioned? The yearly duration curve of a certain power plant is considered as 
straight line from 140 megawatt to 30 megawatt, something like this. Yearly duration curve, straight line from what? 140 megawatt to what? 30 megawatt. If this is 140 and what about this? 30. From this what you can understand, peak demand is 140 and minimum demand is what? 30 megawatt. Okay. Uh, this power is supplied with uh, one generating unit of 80 megawatt capacity and uh, two units of 50 megawatt capacity. That means what is the total installed capacity? Total installed capacity is what? 80 plus what? 2 into 50, 100, which is what? 180 megawatt. So the total plant capacity to meet this demand is what? 180 megawatt. That's what clearly mentioned. Power supplied with what? One generating unit of 80 megawatt capacity and two units of 50 megawatt capacity. And then 2 into 50, okay. The plant capacity factor of the plant is, what is the formula for plant capacity factor? Plant capacity factor equal to what? Wait. Chalo. Plant capacity factor is PCF. That is always average demand by plant capacity. Average demand, you need to calculate from here. Okay, if you notice here, assume this is what T. Okay, T equal to 8760, I don't need to substitute that. Okay, what is the area under this? Divide with T. Area under the load curve divide with T is what? Average demand. What is the area now? So from here to here, 30 into T plus this much, this area, this area is what? A triangle here, let's see. There is a triangle. Okay, what is this? 110 and again what? The breadth is what? T half into 110 into t by what t now t t t get cancelled what i get now this is 55 plus 30 85 right so 85 megawatt 85 megawatt not 86 85 megawatt Eighty-five megawatt. So the answer is what? You no, know, eighty-five by one eighty. So if you assume this is ninety, ninety by one eighty is what? Point five, less than point five because here eighty-five by one eighty. Eighty-five by one eighty is less what? Less than ninety by one eighty. So that means what? The answer is slightly less than point five. This is how you need to answer because I don't have a calculator, na? right? So 85 by 180 is what? Slightly less than 90 by 180. 90 by 180 is what? 1 by 2, that is 0.5. The answer is what? Slightly less than 0.5. What is the answer? Slightly less than 0.5. Okay. Less than 0.5 means what? These two. But slightly less than 0.5 means what? Only this. So the answer is what? 0.472. So this is how you need to answer this question. It's a very simple question again. Okay. Again, it's not a straightforward question. So you need to apply your uh, concepts. Okay. Now we'll move on to the next question. An industrial consumer has a load of 15 kilo, 1500 kilowatt at 0.8 power factor lag for 12 hours and 1000 kilowatts at UPF for 12 hours during the day. The daily load factor is, so if you plot here, 1500 for 12 hours, then what? Uh, 1000 for what 12 hours? This is 1500 and this is what? 1000. An equal amount of time, 12 and what? This is what 24. Okay. Again, here you need to calculate the average demand. Average demand is what now? Because load factor means what average demand by maximum demand. Maximum demand is 1500. Okay. Average demand is what now? 1500 into what? 12 plus. Why the power factor is given? To create a confusion here. Power factor you don't need to consider because by default kilowatts of power is given but not KVA. KVA given, you need to multiply with power, uh, power factor so that you will get kilowatt. Right. So 1500 into 12 plus. 1000 into what? 12 divided with what? 24. That means 2500 by 2. 2500 by 2. Yes or not? 2500 by 2. That is what? 1250. 1250 kilowatts. Uh, what about the maximum demand? 1500. So what is the load factor? Uh, 1250 by average demand by maximum demand. Maximum demand is what? 1500. So 125 by 150. 125 by 150 means what? Uh, 
ट्वेंटी फाइव फाइव जा वन फिफ्ट वन ट्वेंटी फाइव ट्वेंटी फाइव सिक्स जा सिक्स बाई फाइव सॉरी फाइव बाई सिक्स फाइव बाई सिक्स सो अराउंड पॉइंट फोर एट सॉरी पॉइंट एट राइट सॉरी नॉट पॉइंट फोर एट सिक्स एट जा फोर्टी एट राइट सिक्स एट जा फोर्टी एट सो दैट मीन्स अराउंड पॉइंट एट अराउंड पॉइंट एट मीन्स वॉट पॉइंट स्लाइटली ग्रेटर दैन पॉइंट एट नॉट लेस दैन पॉइंट एट सो द ऑप्शन इज वॉट पॉइंट एट थ्री थ्री बिकॉज फाइव बाई सिक्स ना पॉइंट एट थ्री थ्री ओनली नो डाउट ओके सो द आंसर इज वॉट पॉइंट एट थ्री थ्री नाउ वील मूव ऑन टू द नेक्स्ट क्वेश्चन यस इट्स अ डायरेक्ट क्वेश्चन विच आर द फॉलोइंग टर्बाइन इज यूज फॉर हाइएस्ट स्पीड हाइएस्ट स्पीड मीन्स वॉट जनरली वी यूज वॉट कैप्लान टर्बाइन फॉर हाइएस्ट स्पीड इट्स अ डायरेक्ट क्वेश्चन फ्रॉम जनरेशन ओके नेक्स्ट क्वेश्चन now again this is from pv cell you know so in case of pv cell the irradiation and uh, uh, power output uh, is directly proportional and power output and temperature are what inversely proportional okay the maximum power output or p max is directly proportional to what irradiation so irradiation units are watts watts per meter cube okay clear so irradiation is what watts per meter cube okay so p max is directly proportional to what huh? so irradiation no doubt you might have studied these things in generation and p max is inversely proportional to temperature why because whenever the temperature increases the you know the resistance will increase the losses also increases in the pv cell so that's why the efficiency will decrease and the maximum power output will also decrease so that's why so statement 1 is correct at constant irradiation the maximum power available of pv cell is what directly proportional to temperature no inversely proportional to temperature this is what incorrect statement but this is what correct statement now in this question if you see a hydel power plant supplied by a river with a discharge of 3000 meter cube per second at a head of 30 meters with a plant efficiency of 0.79 percentage the developed power of dash megawatt because the answers are given in megawatt so what is the formula for power the power output of the plant let's see is what efficiency multiplied with what gravity multiplied with what discharge multiplied with what head okay so efficiency is given 0.79 but this is what in kilowatt directly <coughs> gravity is given 9.81 9.81 that you know already discharge is what 3000 and head is what given 30 okay so which is what now 9000 so that means i can strike off this 1000 so that's why instead of 1000 kilowatt i can write what megawatt if that is a case 90 so this answer 90 into 9.81 into 0.79 now how to tackle this very simple so assume this is what 10 and assume this is what 8 so which will be what approximately 720 megawatt but the answer will be what slightly less than that why because this is what i approximated as 10 more value this also i approximated as what 0.8 which is more value 10 into 0.8 8 8 into 90 720 okay but the answer will be what the final answer is what Less than 720 megawatt. This is how you can answer because I don't have a calculator, right? Less than slight 720, slightly less than 720. So that's why the best answer is what 697.5 megawatt. So that's it. These are the questions for us. Then, okay, our TG Genco A paper, okay. And questions were not so easy and not tough. Moderate questions, all are formula based questions. all our formula based questions and some questions you can directly answer okay some questions need what some more analysis okay so overall it's a moderate questions given from power system so thank you all the best